The Windy Woods template in Game Maker has a character system used by the player and the enemy. There is only one enemy in the template, so let's expand it by adding a second enemy. This enemy, instead of walking normally, will jump towards the player, who can then either jump on top of it to defeat it or go below it. Create a new project and use the Windy Woods template, give it a name here and click on let's go. You need some assets for this tutorial, so go ahead and download them from the link in the description. Then in Game Maker, go under tools, click on import local package and then select the asset package that you just downloaded. You will see this where you just need to click on add all and then import. Create a new object and name this rbj underscore enemy 2. I'll drag it and put it inside objects, characters and enemies. This is the same place where we have our first enemy object. Now in the object editor, set the sprite for your new object to spr enemy 2 walk. The character system used in this project uses game makers parenting system where one object can be the parent of another object. The child object then gets all the behavior of the parent object. So open the parent menu, then click here, set the parent for this object to obj enemy parent. That object has all the code that handles the movement and interactions of the enemy. Now in your asset browser, under rooms, open rm level 1, which is the first level in this project. In the layers panel, make sure the instances layer is selected and then from the asset browser, drag your obj enemy 2 object and put it here somewhere in front of the player for easy testing. Run the game and you will now see your new enemy walking around. This is because of the parent object which already has the code for all this. If you try to defeat it though, you'll see this. This is happening because our new enemy doesn't know which object to create when it's defeated. So by default, it creates the player's defeated object and that's why we see the player being defeated and the level also restarts. Now in the asset browser under enemies, you'll see there is a defeated object for enemy 1. So let's duplicate this and change the 1 to a 2. Also make sure you remove the number at the end. Now open this object and change its sprite to SPR enemy 2 defeated. So we now have a defeated object for our new enemy, but we still need to tell the enemy object itself to use this object when it's defeated. So open the obj enemy 2 object. Here you will see some events that are taken from the parent object. You can extend an event by inheriting it. So right click on the create event and inherit it. This event runs whenever the instance is created. Now if you are using gml visual, look to this side and if you are using gml code, then look here. In this event, we'll simply set a variable called defeated underscore object. This variable stores the object that will be created when this character is defeated. Set this to obj underscore enemy2 underscore defeated. Make sure you write the names of the variables and the object properly, otherwise you'll get an error. In game, you will now be able to defeat the enemy properly. It does still have the default walking behavior, so let's make it so it only moves by jumping towards the player. So go back to your new obj enemy 2 object and open its create event. Here, let's first set the variable well underscore x to 0. This variable stores the x or horizontal velocity of the character, so if you set that to 0, it won't move horizontally. Then we'll set the animation speed of the character to 0 because it's not walking, so the animation also should not play. Finally, we are setting alarm 0 to 30. What this means is that the event called alarm 0 will run after 30 frames. In that event, we're gonna make the enemy jump and we'll run it again and again to make the enemy jump repeatedly. 
now add a new event which will be alarm zero in this event we want the enemy to jump towards the player first add a new condition to check if the player does not exist in the room in that case exit the event this means the event will stop here and the rest of the code will not run we are doing this so that if the player doesn't exist meaning they've been defeated then the enemy should not jump towards the player because there is no player if you didn't do this you'd get an error because the enemy would try to find the player even when it doesn't exist now after the conditions block is over set the well underscore y variable to minus 21 this is the vertical velocity of the character minus 21 will be the force applied for the jump so you can put in a different number here to change how high the enemy jumps next here we are creating a local variable called jump x which stores this here we are getting the horizontal distance from the enemy to the player and then getting its sign the sign will either be 1 or minus 1 unless the actual value is 0 when the sign will also be 0 so depending on whether the player is to the right or to the left of the enemy you will get 1 or minus 1 which will then be stored in jump x after that we are multiplying that value by 4 and then applying the result to the x velocity so the enemy starts moving in that direction you can change 4 to something else to make it move faster or slower finally we are telling alarm 0 to run again after 60 frames which is one second by default so this alarm 0 event will run again after a second and then it will run again and again making the enemy jump repeatedly you can change 60 to something else to change how often this enemy jumps now if you run the game you'll see the enemy jumping towards the player so our code is working but there is a problem it doesn't stop once it lands on the ground it keeps moving so let's fix that in your enemy object right click on the begin step event and inherit it this event runs every frame and it runs before the main step event in the event we'll check if the grounded variable is true this means that the character is standing on the ground in that case we'll set well underscore x to zero so the character stops moving horizontally run the game and its movement will now be perfect it moves only when it's in mid-air and on touching the ground it stops you can now experiment with this enemy object and even create new enemies that do something different watch this tutorial next to improve your game further and i will see you in the next video